Values of Literature What is value? The characteristics of poems, stories, novels, and others, that make them worthwhile to read are referred to as values of literature. We can say that a work has value for us if we believe that the time spent reading was worthwhile. We might say that a piece of writing has no value to us, if reading it was a complete waste of time. Between the two extremes, a spectrum exists. Of course, you really have no say in the matter if you really don't like reading, right? What is there to value? A work of literature can be valuable in several ways. Literature has entertainment value if reading it is an enjoyable way to pass time. If reading it allows you to have fun, then it has entertainment value. Because not everyone will like the same kinds of stories, writing styles, or subjects, this kind of value is fundamentally subjective. It's necessary to be amused, but being uninterested does not give anyone the right to dismiss a piece of work completely. I can put the book down and decide not to read it any further, but I should be careful not to infer that the book I tried to read is in any way indicative of my dissatisfaction. I was simply bored, to put it simply. Another person might not be. However, I shouldn't presume that just because a work strikes me as fantastic, thrilling, intriguing, etc., that it possesses those qualities in general. Rather, I was interested, plain and simple. Someone else might not be. Literature has moral value if reading it teaches a lesson that will inspire the reader to live a better life. If reading it allows for the opportunity to learn a moral lesson, then it has moral value. A tale or poetry has a moral dimension if it teaches us how to live or tries to teach us. If we disagree with the message it teaches, is the work still worthwhile? I suppose so. Even if the morals a work espouses are in some way objectionable to them, the finest readers will nonetheless recognize its moral significance. It is risky to quantify moral value. For instance, the history of censorship is predicated on the notion that a book should not be read at all if it promotes the wrong ideology. This notion dates all the way back to Plato, one of the first thinkers to investigate the moral significance of literature. I believe we need to be careful not to prioritize moral values above all others. We are using literature to support our own opinions when we reduce a tale or poem to a moral lesson, or demand that a story or poem be a moral lesson that we can support. To avoid making this error, we must learn to regard literature for all of its different kinds of worth. To appreciate means to measure the value of something, and we need to try to find value in a work if we are inclined to reject it simply because we think it teaches the wrong lesson. Here is where ethical value comes into play. Literature has political value if reading it can change the way people live with and influence each other. Literature has political value if reading it causes someone to behave or think differently. Politics is about the distribution and control of power. And to cause things to happen, power, like electricity, goes from one end of a circuit to the other. A work can inspire someone to take action. It has the power to expose injustice, infuriate readers, give voice to the underprivileged, make fun of the corrupt, etc. Here. The fundamental concept is to consider what the literary work is attempting to accomplish. If it tries to convince people or the entire globe to start acting and thinking in this way, it has political value. We can detect a work's political undertones without necessarily agreeing with them. 
But most of the time, if we are actually persuaded to agree with the author, we will appreciate a work for its political viewpoints. Literature has philosophical value if reading it explores human knowledge, how we know, and what we know. If reading it provides the opportunity to consider the nature of human knowledge, how we know, and what we can know, then literature has philosophical value. These inquiries are crucial to the creation of art since every artist must engage with the world in order to depict it, whether lyrically in a poem or through narrative in fiction, he must, to a certain extent, be familiar with it. However, it can be challenging to know for sure what we know or even if we can know anything at all. Some writers explore philosophical issues pretty deeply because they are often a source of crisis that can create great drama and raise intriguing questions. If a work invites us to think about perception, making sense of our place in the world, or self-awareness, then we can say that it has philosophical value. In response to such works, we tend to look inward and wonder, who am I? Literature has historical value if reading it helps one understand the past and how the world has evolved. If reading a work of literature prompts reflection on the past, how things change over time, and how the world has changed into what it is today, then that work of literature has historical value. Sometimes historical value and cultural value are intertwined, for example, if a work is very ancient, it may provide insight into a civilization that predates our own and prompt us to consider how it might have influenced our own culture. The adage that history repeats itself is true, the less we know about the past, the more likely it is that we will experience it again. Of course, there are some experiences that may be worthwhile to relieve, and we may lament some of the history we have left behind, but there are also other situations that we want to avoid. Literature may aid us in understanding the past, processing it, and utilizing it for our benefit. A work's historical importance can occasionally be seen in how it demonstrates our gains and losses. Literature has artistic value if reading it helps us contemplate the nature and beauty of human creativity. If reading it prompts reflection on the nature of beauty and human creativity, literature has aesthetic value. The boundaries of language and its expressive power are frequently explored in literary works. A piece of work that attempts to use words in that way in a fresh and original way will have aesthetic worth for me if I enjoy the way words may be used to produce lovely works of art. I would say that every work of literature that we read in this course has artistic value because they are all works that have remained important over the years for the way they extended the power of language in a new direction. If you don't like words, it will be difficult to see the artistic value of any poem or story. The value will still be there even if you don't see it, however. Literature has cultural value if reading it sheds light on the place and time of the author of the work. If reading a piece of literature prompts you to consider the author's setting and historical context at the time it was written, then it has cultural value. The truth is that authors are just regular individuals like the rest of us, despite the fact that they may appear to be superhuman beings or at least beings that are much above us, transcending this planet to live among the heavens with their artistic ideals. Their experiences in life have shaped their perspectives toward many subjects, and they are concerned with what is going on in the world. If their work addresses the attitudes, customs, and values of their time, or another time, then the work has cultural value. The work becomes a window into a world that is unfamiliar, and we are encouraged to compare cultural differences.
Literature has ethical value if reading it helps us ask questions related to the standards of a good life. If reading it prompts you to consider ethical issues, then it has ethical value. If a story dramatizes struggles and conundrums, it may not be instructing us on how to live, but it may be provoking us to consider the moral principles that the characters uphold. The reader can attempt to view the world via the speaker in a poem if that speaker espouses a specific point of view or appears conflicted about the one they live in. Seeing a speaker's or character's morality in action, even if we don't agree with it, might help us understand what it means or how it affects the world. If we reflect on a moral code, instead of simply rejecting it or embracing it, then we are thinking ethically, and literature that promotes such thinking is ethically valuable. Here are some important ethical questions. What is the good life? What is the excellent life? Where do the definitions of good and excellent come from? Why do different definitions come into conflict? On what basis do they conflict? Remember, works that raise questions do not always answer them. To measure the ethical value of a work of literature, we need to ask the following questions. Do the characters make choices in the work? What are those choices? Do the characters or speakers defend particular beliefs or points of view? What are they? What motivates those choices or beliefs or points of view in the work? Where does the confidence in that motivation come from in the work? Is there a crisis in that confidence in the work? Why? To what place do those choices or beliefs or points of view lead in the work? Yes, we can appreciate literature negatively by deciding that it has little to no ethical significance for us. But just as we must be able to explain why it has worth, we must also be able to do the same for why it does not.